Now I want you to think about those sins which you can remember. Those sins which you committed, you didn't think much of them, you just committed them. You potentially thought that, you know what, I'm all alone in this room, nobody can see me, and you committed a sin. And I want you to imagine those sins that you did in open, in front of other people, you might have said something, you might have backbitten somebody, you may have slandered another person, you may have damaged the honor, or you may have sworn or used evil language, maybe you took the right of another person, maybe you harmed another person, maybe you took something which didn't belong to you, maybe you indulged in interest, maybe you did something which you shouldn't have done, you looked at something, you listened to something, or you did something which you shouldn't have done. Now, Ikhwani, I want you to look at your whole entire life. Imagine how long it's been that you've been alive. How many sins that we have committed. How many times we've disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We considered it something small. Whatever it might be, any sin under the sun, even committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then you've believed, you've repented, and you've changed your ways, you've done righteous good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that for those people, Allah will change their evil deeds for good deeds. All of those evil deeds that you've done, one million evil deeds, Allah won't just forgive you, but Allah will change your one million evil deeds into one million or whatever it might be, good deeds. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Az Zumar. Allah addresses me and you when we've committed a sin, when we've harmed ourselves, we've oppressed ourselves and we're feeling low. Shaitan is on top of us and he's saying, you know what? You're a loser. You've disobeyed Allah. Allah will never forgive you. How can you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you've committed all of these sins? Read ayah number 53 and keep reading it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this great ayah, Say, O oh my slaves who have transgressed against their own souls. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. And indeed, Allah is He who is most forgiving, most merciful. Whether you committed sins in open or sins in secret, sins which you committed on purpose or sins that you did unwillingly, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for His forgiveness. Or repent to Allah with sincere repentance. Perhaps Allah will remove from you your misdeeds and He will admit you into gardens underneath which rivers flow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us, turn back and repent to Allah. Allah is telling us, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Anyone who despairs of the mercy of Allah, are you limiting the mercy of Allah? Are you saying I've committed so many sins that Allah cannot uh, forgive me? Allah is a tawwab, the one who forgives and he, he loves the one who repents and he accepts the forgiveness, he accepts the repentance. Even if you continue to sin as many times as you can, but you turn back to Allah in repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always accept your repentance as long as it's sincere. After mentioning the, uh, the shirk of those who say that Allah is three, so the shirk of the Jews and the shirk of the Christians who say Allah is one of three, the greatest of shirk associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again mentions His mercy. Will they not turn back and repent to Allah and ask His forgiveness? And Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Allah mentions this major shirk. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still leaves a door to His mercy. Will they not turn back and repent and ask Allah for His forgiveness? And Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. So from these ayahs that I've mentioned, we can attain a few points of benefit. Number one, Allah has commanded the believers to repent. And Allah in exchange for that repentance will give the believers Jannah. Number two, or number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. So number four, Allah forgives all sins, except for shirk ikhwani. But even if a person makes shirk and then he turns back to Allah and he repents and he does good deeds, Allah says, you make sincere repentance. You believe you do good deeds. Allah will change all of your sins into good deeds.
Now let's look at some ahadith in which the Prophet والسلام, mentioned repentance. Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, he narrates from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam who said that by him in whose hand is my soul, if you people did not sin, Allah would destroy you or replace you with a people who would sin and then he would forgive them. So this is how much Allah loves it when we turn back to him in repentance. In Bukhari and in Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he says, Verily, Allah is more delighted with the repentance of his slave than a person who loses his camel in a desert and then he finds it unexpectedly. So this man has all of his provisions on his camel and he's traveling alone through the desert. He loses his camel and he thinks, now I'm going to die. But he finds it unexpectedly. Imagine how happy this man would be. Allah is more happy with the repentance of one of us than this man is when he finds his camel. In another narration, Ikhwani, look at how happy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes. And this is in Muslim. Allah is happier when a servant of his repents to him than a man who was on his camel in a waterless desert and the camel escaped from him with his food and his water. When he lost hope of finding it, he retired to a tree and he lied down under his shade. And he thinks now I'm going to die. As he was there, the camel suddenly appears to him. He takes hold of the camel and he says in a state of excessive joy, Oh Allah, you are my servant and I am your Lord. Subhanallah. So overjoyed, so happy with finding his camel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happier than this when one of us turns to him in repentance. Subhanallah. At another point, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he narrates that some prisoners were brought before Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and amongst them was a woman and she was frantically searching through the crowd for something or someone and she found a baby and she took the baby and she cradled it in her arms and she suckled the baby. So then Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, do you think that this woman would ever throw that child into the fire? And then the companion said, by Allah, she would never do that. So then the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is more merciful to his believing servants than that mother could ever be to her child. And this hadith is in Sahih Bukhari and in Muslim. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhi narrates from the Prophet ﷺ who said, Indeed, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the creation, he decreed for himself, my mercy overcomes my anger. So Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed this upon himself that his mercy will overcome and take over and prevail over his anger. This hadith is in Bukhari and in Muslim. Narrated by Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala comes down to the lowest heaven when one third of the night remains and he says, who will call upon me so that I may answer him? Who will ask me that I may give to him? Who will seek my forgiveness that I may forgive him? Every single night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the last third of the, of the sky and He asks, Who is seeking my forgiveness so that I can forgive Him? Rather than us saying, Oh Allah, forgive me, Oh Allah, forgive me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls out, Who is seeking my forgiveness so that I can forgive Him? On the authority of Anas, Radiallahu an, who says, I heard the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that Allah the Almighty has said, so this is a hadith Qudsi. O oh son of Adam, as long as you call upon me and you ask of me, I shall forgive you for whatever you have done and I shall not mind, I shall not care. O oh son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky and were you then to ask forgiveness from me, I would forgive you. O oh son of Adam, were you to come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth and then you were to face me, ascribing no partner to me, I would bring to you forgiveness nearly as great as that. Subhanallah. And finally, one of the Salaf, he says, in my view, the worst kind of self-delusion is to sin greatly, yet to hope for forgiveness without feeling any regret, and to hope to draw closer to Allah without obedience to Him, and to await the fruits of paradise by planting the seeds of the hellfire and to seek the abode of the obedient ones by doing acts of disobedience and to expect reward without doing any worthy action and to hope in Allah after overstepping the bounds. And then he says, you hope for salvation, but you do not tread its path. And then he says, a ship never sails on dry land. Why are we letting shaitan delude us? We are planting the seeds of Jahannam and then we want the fruits of Jannah. 
Ikhwani, to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after we have disobeyed him. Do not ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those people. We understand and we appreciate his immense and unlimited mercy and forgiveness while at the same time knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shadeedul iqab, shadeedul adhab. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our repentance and to unite us with the Prophet alayhi salatu salam in Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك